Welcome to Kick Back with Chris. Kick Back with Chris, the martial arts podcast. Hello and welcome to the very first podcast of 2019. Um, now, I, I'll be straight up honest with you. I was actually about two hours into editing um, episode 25. And originally the plan was going to be to uh, revisit uh, the episodes from last year. Sort of like a... Well, it was meant to be an end of year preview or end of year review, should I say. And um, as I was editing through the files, I, I came to... Um, Tony's section that I was going to add in and I started listening to it fully again and what I decided to well I just decided sod it I'm going to actually do uh, a whole episode for Tony and um, so yeah that that's 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 what we're going to do today um, I wanted to give him the, the first episode of, of 2019 um, out of respect for him um, for those of you that don't know out there um, the martial arts industry and a wider friend, net, friend network lost um, a really good person in uh, in Tony Pillage over the Christmas period um, this guy is somebody who's done so so much for the for the wider industry um, you know the countless tales that have come out of how he has um, done nothing but give to help other people out has just been unbelievable to read um so yeah as i say you know i was i was an hour <laughs> i was always i was already well into editing another version of this podcast but you know just listening to his words it, it, it struck me um you know how important it was that you know for, for myself and for for everybody else as well that may not have caught it the first time around um you know i decided to 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 share this um to share this uh, very unique and and, and one off podcast, um, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get straight into it, um, and I will I'll speak to you at the other side. Okay, so uh, joining me on the line now we have uh, the legend, uh, the martial arts royalty and radio royalty himself, Mr. <laughs> Anthony Pillage. How are you doing? Good sir? morning, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. All all of the above. That's the thing. Just in case, well, you don't know when people are going to listen, do you? Absolutely. It's good to be inclusive. <laughs> So, um, just so everybody understands out there that's listening in, um, usually what I do with podcast guests is I will have a, obviously in the case of Tony, I already know him, but if I don't know them, I'll do a little bit of research and I'll have some mm-hmm. questions prepped. Today, though, we're just, we're just going in as is. We've not, I've not got anything prepped, so um, we're just going to chat. Oh, I like that. I like that's that. a good thing. It was your suggestion, to be fair. So I, I know. I'm, I'm, I, just, I... I'm just going to run with it, see what happens. <laughs> You're just a wonderful facilitator. <laughs> I've been How are the going, Chris? How are the podcasts going? Um, really well, actually. Um, really? I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect. Um, it was. It's something that I'd wanted to, to kind of do for a while, and mm. um, I suppose I was getting in my own way. I was creating excuses as to why not to do it. Of course. And I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to do it. So mm. I started doing it. Got some nice feedback. Um, and then I've just kept going with it, and we've just actually Brilliant. yesterday got a sort of like a semi semi permanent home now. Uh, I've committed some funds to it, mm-hmm. um, and um, we very nicely had some people offer to chip in and help out a little bit as well. So that's great. Oh, brilliant. So um, yeah, we'll see see what <laughs> see if I'm still doing it in six months' time or it's driven me mad. But, well, I tell um, you what, 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 what. The reason I was saying that was um, if you look at Mick Tully, who was yes. strange, me and Russ ran into today. Um, and Ant McGinley, yep. they they set up um, Tully's podcast about I don't know eighteen months ago, mm-hmm. um, and and they, they've it, it's sort of done pretty well for them. But I'm sure if you were to contact them with any sort of advice, they're they're, they're, they're two good mates of mine. Yep. Um, I'm sure they would help you because they, they they got it up into some quite high numbers on the um, Apple iTunes uh, yep. podcast. Actually, so, um, Mick was actually the first person I contacted. When I decided, oh, okay, brilliant. Yeah, when I when when I decided to do this because I've actually well I've known Mick for a while and out of respect for what he does uh, as well as um, knowing that he's a great person, um, I contacted him first just to say, look, this is what I'm I'm thinking about doing. I wanted mm-hmm. to let you know first, um, and very gracefully he 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 you know gave me loads of advice, put me onto different people, um, and I would and anybody that's listening now that's not checked out Mick's podcast, I, I highly suggest you do. Um, it's great. Great content, and uh, Mick's a great guy as well. And uh, anybody that knows Mick, well, they they know what he's like. So yeah, it's uh, yes. it's really great. Content. Leave it at that, shall we? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> his acceptance speech at the last awards. <laughs> yes, yes, he um, 
he does like a bit of the Tully Road show, to be fair. But uh, <laughs> uh, he, he, um, he, he's a good guy. You know, he, um, when I was very poorly, he dropped me around a Viennetta one night because I, 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 I wanted a Viennetta. It was anything I fancied eating. And he dropped one around. So friendship like that, mate, you don't, you don't ever knock. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. Not at all. So um, I think normally at this point I would say, um, okay, so for those people that don't know um, whoever the guest is, tell us a little bit about yourself but i don't think there's anybody really out there in the martial arts community that doesn't know who you are for one reason or another um, <laughs> but let's say let's say there is somebody that doesn't know tony pillage okay how, how would you describe yourself awesome <laughs> <laughs> i would agree <laughs> with that I, ca- I came into martial arts very late um i was very fortunate to find the path um by it was by fluke to be to be honest um I wasn't particularly talented. Um, I, I enjoyed doing the training, but th- that came about after I had a deep vein thrombosis and I decided to change my life. And then um, I sort of just fell into it, and th- the rest is history. So obviously a lot of people know me through doing the pressure point stuff, which um, you know, we sort of opened up some doors and, and took away some of the BS from it, I think. Um, and it, you know, I look back, you know, obviously I, I don't do too much now because of uh, – the cancer, but mm. on the other side of the fence, I was talking to someone the other day, and uh, I, I, it was actually someone who was having a bit of a pop at me, to be honest, on Facebook. And um, so I, I basically listed out all the um, achievements, the, uh, the downgrade, where they came from, um, headlining shows, being on boarding, hoardings around uh, London, uh, being on the front cover of magazines, da 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 et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and it, it actually was quite interesting because – I look back and I think, well, in what is basically 16 years, we've achieved an incredible amount. And yes. um, I, I, me and Russ were talking earlier about when, when you leave the world, you want to leave it in a slightly better place than when you found it. And I think, you know, certainly I look at the the students that we've had through the doors, how we've changed people's lives. That's a wonderful thing. But if I went and did a, a show, say, like Seni or T-Max or Kazan, I may well in the past have had I don't know, maybe over a weekend, 50, 60 people say, I oh, would have an autograph or a photograph, which is which is really lovely. And you think, why the hell does anyone want my autograph? But, you know, they do. And um, since the cancer, I might get 200 people coming up. Mm-hmm. 200 people and saying, you know, my, my wife's got cancer, uh, my mum's had cancer, my sister's got cancer, I've got cancer. But we've, through um, my, my sort of... Uh, where I've dealt with it, it's given people a lot of inspiration and hope. And, you know, that, that to me is the legacy we've left. Yeah. That, you know, if, if we can change one people's life, um, especially where, where this horrible disease is concerned, then we, we've left, we've led a life which is worth living, in my opinion. So, yeah, so martial artist, cancer, ruggedly handsome, uh, do a, a radio show on Hills FM, author, um, and just a damn nice bloke. Oh, and crocodile wrestling, of course. Crocodile wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I saw on a business card once that someone gave me, and I thought, <laughs> that's just the coolest thing ever. So I've had that on the <laughs> business cards. Damsels rescued, crocodiles wrestled. And, uh, or was it and, uh, uh, wrestled? <laughs> <laughs> for, any, for any of the doubters out there, especially whoever this person was that was, was questioning you on Facebook, um, I, I, I've let Tony poke me before, and it hurt. Oh, so, yes, well... That's another story. And what we did that day is a, is a, is a story we should just keep to ourselves. It will stay between us forevermore, absolutely. I think it should. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I'd, I'd love to touch a little bit on um, the awards that you run mm-hmm. um, because I've been to both the, the, the two different awards. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, myself and I know other people have said the same thing, what, sort of, what a positive influence it's had on us. I was actually talking mm-hmm. to Paul yesterday from Fighting for Autism, who I met through your event, who yes. I now work with regularly now to support mm-hmm. his group fighting for autism um yeah. but yeah I just wondered lovely if man to... absolutely lovely lovely man he is he is uh, I, I just wondered if you could share a little bit about the events and what ins- yeah, inspired you to to bring them about um i i have been to many um award ceremonies over the years um the most recent before ours were probably the mai ones which i think pretty much everybody and their cats have been to at some stage um I went to the last one, and it was strangely the day after I'd had a stroke. Wow. I, and um, I was there on a walking stick. I didn't realize I had a stroke. Um, and um, I then realized, that because obviously the cancer, I've only got one lung, everything that's gone on, um, 
I am disabled now. And I, I've got no problem with that at all. But I was thinking with all these dinners, there is a huge, um, a huge uh, community of disabled martial artists out there. And you know, for what would be easy for us, they are, uh, they're doing this week in, week out um, to the best of their ability. And I've realized there's some wonderful people out there. I mean, there's a, a, um, just this plethora of really good people, but they don't get recognized. And I thought, wouldn't it be lovely to have a dinner that actually celebrated, and we don't call it disabled, we call it enabled martial artists. Mm. So it started off um, uh, three years ago. Um, the first one was extraordinary, um, and we got so much positive feedback from it, it was, it was ridiculous. And the thing, I think the thing is, Chris, people would look at that, and they would come along, and I'll give you a perfect example. A friend of mine now has been in a wheelchair for years, and he's a sixth man in Chinese martial arts. I can't remember which style. And he, he, he was wheeled out. He got his award. And he started crying. And he turned around and he said, look, all my life, no one's ever wanted to listen to my story. They just see an old man in a wheelchair. Whereas tonight, people want to listen. And the stories and the bravery and the courage of these people yeah. has been unbelievable. And it's the most motivating night of, 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 of the year for me. Mm. Um, and through it, I met some incredible people. Now, mm. I spoke to uh, Bob and Paul um, of MAI's fame uh, a while ago. And I said, you know, with the, with the awards dinners, I mean, they're all well and good. But the reality is the awards do not mean anything. I said, have you thought about actually putting it out to the public and having – um, different categories. So if someone wins, say, the best DVD of the year or the best seminar of the year or what have you, um, it's, it's amazing um, because it's the general public who have actually um, done this. Um, and, and that award then can help people. You know, so you know, say, say you won the best online platform, you, know, you can put that on your, on your website, on, on your literature, and it gives people you know, a, a really good feel of what you guys are doing. And... So we decided, right, we're going to actually run an award ceremony based around that and um, make it that level of integrity. Well, the first one was just extraordinary. Uh, uh, and people just really appreciated what, what they'd won. And, and it was the public. Um, and although it did bring out the worst in some people trying to vote for themselves, <laughs> also, we, no, I'm really not joking. Um, but what happened was... Um, over the, the we've done six awards three disabled three enabled um if you like and then we've done the three british martial arts awards um they, they, it's, it's very quickly become one of the the major um evenings in, in british martial arts yeah um f we, we were getting phone calls a month before um the last one saying can we come as well who, who are you with oh no we just said it's a really cool event we'd like to be there yeah so we've had some legendary martial arts there the last one as you know, we had Brian Jacks, yep. the uh, the judoka who was um, obviously so um, uh, wonderful in superstars back in the seventies, which I remember. Um, and what a lovely man! Um, and, and again, every single dinner we've had, there's been a wonderful story attached to it. People have done lovely things to each other. And as you say, you met Paulie there. Yep. What what has happened um, categorically is there has been this. Uh, quantum entanglement of people who have met at the dinners and who've become friends and, and they're now working together. I could give you probably 30 instances where this has happened and it's been completely organic. It's not been forced. It's just been a wonderful experience for people. Um, and I, you know, I, I don't know how long I've got left. Chris, you know, no, no one does, but what after the last one, I felt I, so pleased and so proud of what we created because you know for, for seven days afterwards social media was still full yeah. of photographs and people doing videos and explaining how it meant to them and, and what it meant to them and it will carry on you know when i've got it will carry on and it will it will grow and it will be you know a, a still a beautiful thing but it, it's done with integrity it's done with love it's done with honesty and most importantly for me um as you, as you know, and I've got Russ sitting here now, um, one of our dear friends died earlier on this year, Scott Caldwell. Mm. And, of course, it was always going to be very sad uh, with, with Scott not being there. But uh, on that same uh, coin, Scott was a fairly contentious person, and deliberately, and that's 
that was his path. But a lot of people, because he lived on the Isle of Man, would not have had the pleasure of his company. The dinners did that. Yeah. They allowed people to meet him, and everyone was shocked. You know, this person, the caged devil, da da da, and, and all you see is this this madman with his weird glasses on, with this big beaming smile, with his arms wide open, hugging people and taking a genuine interest in who they were, and sticking up for the underdog, and and stirring up, and that's what you know, Russ. Russ and him did, and and I think British martial arts would always be grateful to the pair of them for actually yeah. making that. And you know, I would say categorically from my own point of view, you know, I I w- w- was perhaps in a slightly different world from these guys, but as soon as I saw and I started to understand what they were trying to do, I I, I, I you know I threw my my cards in with them straight away because one thing that I, I do appreciate more than anything is honesty, yeah. and. There are so many fakes and liars and uh, charlatans and false prophets in British martial arts as to be ridiculous. I look what Russ has actually achieved with his uh, mean streets, and that's why he won so many awards this year, because you know, in a year he's got 35 coaches under him. And these guys, mate, you know, I know quite a few of them, and, I, and they're really good people, but the standards are extraordinary. You know, and I, I, I will say this in front of Russ, and I've never actually said this before, but... I, I watch some of their training. I watch the videos. I, I know the people, and, and they are talented performers. I probably, um, had it not been for the illness, I probably would have given up teaching for a year and gone up to train with Russ so I could pass on the proper stuff to uh, my students. Now, I can say truthfully that um, we've been going for uh, since the third of the third of the third. So it's a few years. We've had 11 students attacked in that time. Um, and I'm not talking about a pub scuffle. I'm talking about um, an aggravated burglary, a carjacking, a knife attack, uh, three people jumping someone out outside of a nightclub. All of our students have walked away on skates. Wow. Um, so we've, we've been on the right path, but I, I see huge gaps. And if I can see huge gaps, and I'm supposed to be sort of fairly well known within the thing, um, if other people, I see some of the, the absolute dross that's being taught these days, and it, it, it's abhorrent. And, and Russ and um, Russ and uh, and Scott had opened up the doors to people to look at it from a different way, and uh, it, it was genius. It was absolutely genius, and it was proper. Um, and all of a sudden, there is a new a new level of genuine um, teaching to people to deal with people with, with in a violent situation, and and. Yeah, I, I was sold the first time I saw it, and you know, I've been around long enough not to sort of fall for scams and fakers. But this is the real deal. Yeah. So that's one of the great things that I think can happen from the dinners. And also, I mean, you know yourself, isn't it lovely to go to a place where you recognise so many good people? Yeah. And yeah, you know, when Terry O'Neill was up there, um, which was the two ago, I, I was actually like a child. That's Terry O'Neill. That's the <laughs> legend that is Terry O'Neill. And, you know, I, I've met people like Hoist Gracie and Chuck Liddell and all these wonderful people. But I never had that, oh, my God, moment with any of them apart from Terry. Um, and he came up to me afterwards and he said, uh, in his sort of Liverpudlian accent, um, I mean, this is a guy who was um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's stuntman, basically, <laughs> um, still doing the doors in his 70s up in Liverpool. And, and and a legend. There is, you know, don't ever call me a legend, mate. More like legend. Terry O'Neill is a legend. <laughs> and um, he comes up to me and he said, I don't want to give you any shit, he said, but this is the best martial arts event I've ever, ever been to. And I said, well, that's, that's really kind and very sweeping. And he said, no. He said, I'm telling you it is because for the first time I see people who are from different backgrounds, different disciplines, different martial arts, and all of a sudden they've all come together and they're as one. There's no politics. There's no bullshit. It's people supporting each other for the good of martial arts. And he said, I've absolutely been thrilled by, by being here. And uh, yeah, I, I walked away like the proverbial dog with two of them. Um, mm-hmm. Still going, oh, my God, it's Terry O'Neill. Um, lovely man. Fantastic. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. It very much does. It very much does. Now, thank you for saying it. And you thought Paulie buddy. could talk. <laughs> I'm just a fluffer for him. <laughs> I you know when I, when I when I decided to do this, I thought I'll I'll aim for about an hour for this podcast. 
Wow. Yeah, well, we just we've just gone the second cup of coffee by then. That's gone. That's well gone. <laughs> I think we're probably into about two hours now. To be fair, but no, it's all good. It's all good. Hey, two hours of quality content. That's what we'll say. Cool. Um, so earlier you mentioned as well um, that you were an author. So mm-hmm. um, could you tell us a little bit about your book? Well, there's two books out there. Um, the first one is a really strange story. I, I woke up, as you know, Chris, I'm always busy. I'm always doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I woke up one Sunday and we had nothing to do. It was a, a particularly overcast, rubbishy sort of day. And it was just like, blah. So, um, and I was bored senseless. I was absolutely bored senseless. Strangely, the following Sunday, also not doing anything, woke up early, really early, thought, I'm not going to go through a boring day like that again. What can I do? What can I do to make... I'm going to write a book in a day, I decided. <laughs> and I did. It's called The Dow Spiritual Warrior. And um, it was basically sort of um, little life lessons I've learned and um, uh, quotes from films and stuff that sort of resonated with me that I use in my teaching. And it was, it was really well received, but it, it was a fun thing. And to get a book in your hand is a really wonderful thing. It's like giving birth, I would guess. Um, but quite not so much placenta, really. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side um, of, of the coin, you know, it, was, it was good to do, and I'm glad I did it, but it, it was still a cop-out. It was like I, I wanted to do something. It was pretty good. Um, I, I know a lot of people enjoyed it. I, I certainly enjoyed it. But um, I did, after the operation, and, and I think it actually um, struck me after going up to um, the martial arts show up in Darlington or what have you, uh, and so many people have come up to me and talked about how how my um, Facebook uh, pages had, had really inspired people and what have you. And I thought it would be really good to leave a legacy in a book. So I, I took I took the premise that I'm going to diarise it like I've done in Facebook. But then on the days that needed perhaps more expansion, I then write about it. Mm-hmm. And I started and it was brilliant. It was a brilliant and um, wonderful experience. Then I got stuck. So a very dear friend of mine um, offered me a, a use of a caravan, a static caravan on these mobile home things up in the Welsh mountains overlooking the beach where oddly um, uh, Top Gear used to go and tr- uh, do driving on the beach. Wow. So I'm in a foot up a mountain overlooking this beautiful thing um, and it was wonderful. Um, so I had a week up there writing and I basically broke broke the back of the book then. Um, and it's called Breaking Bob. It, it's about my journey with cancer. Uh, it starts off um, basically with an introduction leading into when I first got the uh, the news, and it finishes um, with me in the dressing room of Wilco Johnson, the uh, the famous guitarist who has become a really good friend, who also sadly suffered from cancer. Mm. And um, it's the story in between. And the, the first time I actually had it in my hand and then reread it, I thought this is actually really good. Um, and you know, I am quite self-critical and. But I thought this 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 works, and um, I think we've had about fifty six or fifty eight um, um, reviews on Amazon. All of them have been uh, five star. All of them have been really really good reviews. But my favourite one, I was up going to a clinic in London, and um, I'm on the uh, I'm on the tube, and this lady is looking at me opposite, and she says, "Excuse me, are you Bob?" Well, the reason it's called Breaking <laughs> Bob is because of um, Lord Flashheart and Bob, if you recall. Yes, and um, yes. I said, no, no, no matter, I'm not Bob. And I wasn't even thinking about, you know, that, uh, anything to do with the book. And she said, you are Bob. And I go, no, I'm Andy. She said, yes, you're Bob. <laughs> it's a bit like the trigger moment on um, Only Fools and Horses every day. <laughs> and um, she gets out her Kindle and the book she was reading was mine. Wow. And that was just brilliant. I mean, it was just such a nice feeling. That someone is actually reading it, and I know, you know most of my friends would have bought one, and the people who knew me, um, out of maybe curiosity. But I think it actually had a, it resonated with a lot of people. And unfortunately, you know, today um, has been a, a quiet day. But you know, over the course of a week, I may get ten phone calls with people who've got cancer, and you know, I, I'll try and help them where I can. Um, and, and it's and it's a good thing, and the books helped an awful lot with that. Because that's got my sort of message out that there are alternatives to chemotherapy. There, there are other things. And, um, you know, two and a half years ago, I was given, no, sorry, um, three and a half years ago, I was given six months to live. I was still here. A year ago, my I was given an updated prognosis. Oh, you have a year to live. That's 18 months down the line. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm still here. 
And, you know, I'm, I've slowed up a little bit. I've, I've, I've had to adjust my life, but I'm still here. And it's a wonderful world, mate. And, you know, we, we try and, and you know, I, I see people just living their lives in, in an existence. They don't live. And I realize that all the people I surround myself with, and you, you mentioned about Paulie talking earlier, all the people that in my life now are passionate people. And it doesn't matter what about. Paulie is so passionate about, um, you know, the autism thing, and, and rightly so. You, you know, you're incredibly passionate about getting a good positive message from martial arts, martial arts out there, and, you know, with, with the kicking thing. I think it's brilliant. We've all got our passions. And it doesn't matter where, where those passions are coming from. There is an overlap because we just have an interest in bloody life. <laughs> and I think it's really important. And I, and I think that's where when you have a, a terminal disease and you're told, it does make you live your life a little bit better. Wow. So yeah. What an important message. Well, I know. I, am, <laughs> I <laughs> personally, I know I've said this to you personally before, yeah. but I will speak on behalf of the martial arts industry as a whole and just say thank you for everything that you've done and continue to do. Um, oh, bless you, mate. Thank it's, you. Um, it's, it is amazing work that you do and it does it does inspire it inspires me and i know it inspires thousands of others as well um and and the the, the award shows especially the the two highlights of my year every year um, yeah. really, really look forward to it and it's it's created this big community um and it's um <laughs> then perhaps shouldn't say this but mm -hmm. it's one of those events where I don't worry about which table I'm going to end up sat on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't care I just, so I'll just it's turn up good. and sit wherever and, it, and, and yeah. you know you're going to be sat with friends yes um, and that uh, lovely what, you know, 300 people there and, and everyone mingles everyone talks to each other and, it, and it's brilliant mate and uh, you know I, I, I looked out uh, you know, I wasn't sure if I, I had the energy to do the whole of the um, comparing because you know, you're, you're actually up and talking for about six hours, um, but I thought no, if this is my last one, I wanted to I want to do it and I'll, I'll give it my best shot. Although in fairness, Russ and Tony Bailey were on on standby. If I um I, I didn't tell him he was on standby apparently, um, <laughs> but um, they were there in case I faltered, but I didn't, and it was wonderful to look out there. And there was one particular point where. Um, there was a lull in the proceedings, and um, we had a little break just before about eight o'clock, I think. Uh, we would had our food. Everybody sort of recharged their glasses for the, the major awards that were coming. And I just stood there for a minute or two, and I just watched. Everyone was engrossed in the conversation of their, their fellow people on their table. There was conversations, and uh, I think to sum it up, uh, my old boss, Daryl Clark, and his mate, Greg, uh, came along as my guests of honour. Greg, uh, Greg and uh, Russ have been, uh, sorry, uh, um, Greg and Daryl have been good friends for probably near on 30 years. And I invited them up there because Russ, uh, because Daryl had been so uh, kind in donating some equipment to try and help me fight the cancer. And it's always good to spend time with them anyway. So... Greg uh, contact, sits me down, and he's, and he's got this really earnest look on his face, and he goes, I can't believe tonight. I go, well, why? He said, there are some incredibly tough people here. You don't have to tell me. You know, and, and there were some of the leading lights in British martial arts there. And he said, all I've seen tonight is love, respect, and courtesy. That's all I've seen. And, and it was true. You know, when people were walking past chairs, it was always like, after you sort of thing. People were talking to each other. People were conversing. And when you said, you know, you've been doing some stuff with Paulie, I thought, that's brilliant. That's exactly what I wanted to achieve with this. This sort of good people working together for the right reasons, and we all benefit. And it's done with courtesy and love. And, and that's what martial arts is about to me. And I think I said that at the dinner. You know, Guru Dan in Asanto said, you know, why do we do martial arts? We do it because of love. We do it for love of family. We do it for the love of friends. And most importantly, we do it for love of self. And I think that is perfectly true. Um, Very much. And it's a great feeling to smack someone. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note. <laughs> so all this nice is then I have to balance it off with my yang side. <laughs> Mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yep, I've got a shoot. I've got um, a bunch of kids stood outside the door looking at me now, ready to come in for class. So I better, better finish it there. But no, thank all you right. very much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Bless you, mate. You're listening to Kick Back with Chris, the martial arts podcast, brought to you by www.onlinekicking.co.uk. 
So yeah, you know, as I said at the outset of this podcast, you know, uh, I was I was a fair way into to editing uh, a very very different podcast, um, but I don't know. I, I listening to Tony's words, uh, it 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 struck me that you know um, I I wanted to share with people um, his words, um, and you know, I, I, I the podcast itself is actually on episode four. Um, we're on twenty five now. And, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people that won't have heard that podcast before previously, and it, and it just felt right um, uh, to, to give Tony the time um, for people to, to listen to his words again and, and, and uh, to, to take on board his advice, his words of wisdom, you know. Um, so, so from next week's episode, uh, we are going to be returning to our regular format, obviously. Um, I know that Tony would have wanted me to get on and, and crack on with this podcast because, he, you know, it was it, one of the last conversations that we had actually uh, in person was, was with regards to the podcast. He actually expressed, um, you know, how pleased he was that it was working out and, 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 you know, and again, how pleased he was that I was, I was doing this. So, um, you know, uh, the, the greatest respect that I can pay to Tony in, in, in that respect is to, to get on and push, push this podcast forwards, which is what I'm going to do. So next week we'll be joined by Mr. Craig Smith, who runs his martial arts school based in, and I'm going to actually, I want to say Leicester. I'm going to, I'm going to quickly check now because I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm just going to get on Facebook because isn't Facebook like the ether of all information. <laughs> I'm just going to bring up his profile now because I don't want to say the wrong place. It wouldn't be particularly professional. So yeah. Um, yeah, I was right. Stealth martial arts, uh, based in Colville. Now I've actually been along to his school, um, before and it's fantastic facility. I think though, um, some people more recently may have seen some of his live videos. If you haven't seen them, go and check them out because, well, let's just say he's not afraid to say what he's thinking. Um, so I thought it'd be a fantastic guest to get on. Obviously as well, he's got a, a really varied, um, background in martial arts and runs a very, very successful, um, uh, martial arts business so we'll be having him on to chat about um, what he's up to um, and his background and all that sort of thing um, we'll also be joined excuse me we'll also be joined by Mr Matthew Chapman as always going through um, his weekly match chats I actually do have one banked from from Christmas so we may well use that one as a bonus as well um, but yeah thanks again uh, for your time this week and um, you know do share this around so as many people as possible can hear um, the fantastic and fabulous words that our good friend good dear missed friend uh, Mr Tony Pillage had to say in the episode and um, thanks again for your support and let's uh, let's push 2019 now and, and see where we can go with this podcast and obviously with your training and your martial arts schools thanks again guys and I'll speak to you very my soon name. That's my name. That's my name. Yeah.